Hey guys, and welcome to this video. My name is Sabr Chalasi, and I'm going to be talking about some effects ideas for the Rebel Way competition that we're doing with Rookie. And I'm going to go over the edits that we have, the animation that we've created, and point out where the various effects will be and can be added, and then show some inspiration and uh, some references for what can be achieved. And we have other uh, references from other artists as well. So please do check all of them uh, to get the maximum amount of ideas. And then hopefully that will give you enough uh, resources to get started. So I'm going to make this window smaller and we're going to take a look at what I have here. So please be, uh, be aware that I'm using Linux. So it's going to be a little bit slow uh, to use the uh, Nuke Studio, especially with this format that I have. But uh, that shouldn't prevent us from working on this. So this is the competition, the final animation. So what we've done is we hired an animator. We worked on the uh, creating a simple environment. And then we got the creatures. And we wanted to have these two, uh, a creature, a character fighting a creature. And we wanted the idea to be very open, very flexible. So uh, and I'm going to explain how, uh, where the flexibility is. And then... I'm going to show a couple of references from different cinematics and point out where these effects can be added into the uh, uh, into the uh, competition itself. So the first thing is we have this creature rising, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks, maybe, we're going to add one more variation to how this creature is coming into uh, this environment. But for now, this is what we have. So the first thing that uh, I wanted to talk about is the environment type that we can start with. So right now it looks like it's made of rocks, but it doesn't have to be like this. You can change the ground to have any kind of material. You can change it to have uh, sand, or you can change it to have uh, lava, or you can have uh, put it under in a river or a lake, or you can put it in snow environment. So you can change the entire environment to fit the effects that you want. And each one of these will give you a completely different direction. So if you go with a snow idea, for example, you can have all of this be snow, or you can have a snow where you have a, a thick layer of uh, frozen water, basically snow, and then underneath it water. So you can do water simulation and RBD at the same time. Or you can go with uh, rocks where you have sand at the top and then mud in the middle and then rocks underneath it. Or you can go uh, create a desert-like environment. So based on the decision that you're going to make in the beginning, the effects will vary uh, afterward. So we have the beginning segment, and we split it into two uh, parts. So what you can do is you can have the spikes go up, up until here, and just show the spikes of the creature. And then as it comes up, it starts destroying the environment with the ground bending and deforming. So uh, the first couple of frames here, it can just be one effects with the spikes, and that will be uh, uh, localized uh, destruction. And then you can lift the ground and deform it so that it covers basically all this area. And then as it comes up, it creates this explosion, which is much faster. So this will give you a, a huge explosion. And then obviously, as the creature comes up, you can have RBD falling uh, along the creature. If, you, uh, if you're if you going to use lava, for example, you can have the creature emit lava as it comes up, like the uh, Kronos in Clash of the Titan. Or you can have mud, or you can have sand. You can do whatever effects you want. And then uh, the next part is the 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 hit with the with the claws. So right now it's it looks very. It's not too powerful. What we can do is you can add some rocks, place them exactly around that. You can change the environment as well to make the claw goes uh, go inside the ground a bit. And this will allow you to create more explosive impact. So when the creature uh, hits the ground, you get these a huge explosion if you want to uh, accentuate that and make it more drama uh, dramatic. Then we have the roar or the scream here. So this is another effects. And it, depending on what you're going to go, you can have uh, lava coming off of it. You can have sparks. You can have uh, drools. You can have any kind of effects. You can have wind, for example. And all of this is also uh, affecting the character. So I'm not, for now, I'm not going to talk about the character here, the hero character. We're just going to talk about the creature and the environment with it. 
So you have the roar there. And you see the this part, the creature moves its head up. So we can have some rocks, an RBD, or another layer stuck to it. If it's coming off from a snow environment or from a sand environment, you can have this layer be full of sand. And then as it moves up, that sand starts to activate and, uh, and fall down. So throughout this entire animation, you can always have RBD and sand falling off of it as long as it's uh, active there. Cool. So that's then uh, the scream. And then another big claw. So this rise, see this, the hand here uh, rising above. You can change the camera a bit. We use the God of War style camera. So you can change it whatever you want and then have it uh, emit RBD and, and smoke and various other things as it rises. And then once it hits with that huge snap, boom, you get everything falling down. So if you emit if you move smoke up with RBD and everything, then when it hits, you can have all of that snap off the object. You can even have sand on top that falls down when it hits the, the shield. So again, I'm not going to talk about the shield at the moment. I'm just going to focus on the character. Then we have it breaks the shield and then it snaps the ground. This doesn't have to be a huge effects. And then you see how it drags how the creature drags the claw, you can have effects as well. And you can always change and sculpt the ground to fit the uh, the effects or to, to basically uh, work better for the effects. And then we have the sweep. So for the sweep, we can do what we can do for or a, an idea, for example, you can have the creature charging uh, some kind of, uh, if it's made of lava, for example, you can have a charge where there is some kind of force here at the tip. And then as it hit, that energy dissipates or goes somewhere. And the same thing for this hand. It's charging and it's, uh, you know, getting warmer and warmer here. It's accumulating energy. And then as it sweeps, it throws that energy out. So it doesn't have to be just a, a, the actual hand. You can have some magical effects from the creature itself. And this sweep is uh, an amazing opportunity to create some really cool smoke, either smoke, lava, or just having it affect the smoke, uh, the, uh, like create an airfield as it moves on top of the ground, everything gets affected and starts swirling. So you can use that to create a really cool uh, smoke sims. And then the character jumps, and then it's gonna do this part and then hit. So here again, the creature is gonna wobble and then uh, hit the ground again and maybe in the near and if we still have time and resources we will add a little bit more keyframes here to add a jump or a hit or something like that cool so this is it for the character itself for the creature coming off the uh coming off the ground i'm going to talk about the character itself and then i will show the various references and then I will show the various references that I have here. So for the creature, the first thing that we have, we can start with this person uh, decloaked, or we can have uh, like a portal and it, uh, he's coming through a different environment and then coming into this environment. We can have the character be cloaked and then decloak as just in the first couple of frames. And then once it appears, it starts interacting with the environment. So the first thing with the character is the roar. And for this one, I would definitely have some kind of effects that maybe the character has been in the desert for a long time or has some weathering from the environment. All of that will get blown out. You can have some wind as well uh, affecting affecting the, the hero character. And all of this is being emitted from, uh, from the character itself. Then we have the shield. So for the shield, you can do whatever you want. You can have... Uh, you know, a localized shield, you can have a, an, an entire half sphere or like a dome, <clears throat> pardon me, or, uh, or a dome uh, shielding the character. You can have a plane, you can have uh, lightning effects or something that wraps around the claw and then it releases and it disappears. So it doesn't have to be a shield. It could be something that, you know, uh, comes out of the hand like a tree growing and then it holds the claw and then it dissipates. So you can go with the, with any direction there. And then the shield breaks, whichever it is, either the character drops because the, the, the force is too strong or the shield breaks. 
And when that happens, again, you can have another hit on the ground. And the character here would definitely have some magical effects left from whatever that energy release is. If it's the shield, the shield will be falling, uh, will be falling like if it's hexagon or uh, honeycomb shape or whatever it's made of, you can have it be dissipating as, as it gets destroyed here. And then the jump, a couple of uh, smoke effects here. And then this part. So this part, you can you can look for all kinds of anime references. You can look for the uh, stranger things with the with the wires, and uh, the idea is you're gonna form some kind of energy or uh, an energy ball or some electricity or anything really, and then shoot that. So you can have two things: you can form the ball and throw it at the creature, or you can throw an entire beam with a continuous source of energy coming from the hands, like a Dragon Ball Z or like Naruto, for example, with the uh, Rasengan uh, effects. So it, it goes from, it gets accumulated and then it gets shot and it goes from A to B. And uh, so that source is either one or continuous. If it's continuous, you will have to trace some kind of effects, like it's uh, peeling off the skin or causing damage to the creature. And then that leaves something on on the skin and if it's a hit then it would just be one hit and then that will ripple uh on the uh, on the creature and then this jump you can have some effects on the feet and some wind effects as well so one thing i was thinking for the character uh, uh one effects that i always liked in uh, starcraft uh one of the character the main characters she has a suit where lightning goes through the wires so it's like it's pulsing through the wires. And this is something definitely worth looking into because this character is a uh, sci-fi. So you can have some, some kind of pulsing that uh, represents the character's feeling. If the pulsing is too fast, that means it's getting uh, agitated. If it's, uh, you know, slow and getting uh, and dim, you can use that to convey the feeling of the characters if you want to. And that's it for... For the uh, for the various effects, so let's talk about some references. So what I have here is the first one from uh, Starcraft, and I'm going to share uh, the, the links for or the names for the for the various trailers. And hit play. So what we have here is the creature coming up, and this is a reference for this part. So the beginning, basically, and you can see how it quickly. I'm going to go step by step. See how quickly. It starts off like this. It's pushing the ground, and then it's going to quickly go up. In a couple of frames, it just jumps. So we could use something like this. And with this one, you can do the same as well. You don't have to show the spikes. You can have the ground just deform like this. And then as it goes up, all that ground will be shot and crumble and just gets destroyed into uh, finer pieces. And you can see how... It's explosive. It basically shot everything up, and then the remaining will just fall down and interact with it. And see, this is very cool. Cool. So that's one effects, and then uh, this one is for from the uh, Clash of the Titan, the Chronos. I was uh, thinking about this arm to mimic the claw that sweeps into the character. So you can have something like this for the sweep. For this portion, yeah, when it sweeps. And then for, this is a reference for the shield. So I basically put a couple of trails and I picked the segments that I like. So this is for the one type of the shield. You can see it's a quite large. And he, he is shooting energy that it forms the shield. It's not that the shield hap, uh, appears from nowhere. It's actually coming from a source. And in this case, the, uh, the, he's shooting a beam of energy that to contract, contradict the, the incoming uh, uh, smoke plume. And that's creating the shield. So two forces basically colliding. And that's what uh, how we're getting this effect. So that's one idea as well, but you don't have to shoot the force. You can you can actually. So if you want to use that, you can have the hand shoot some kind of energy towards this, and then 
that will get deflected and create a, 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 sphere, a sphere or a shield around the character. All right, so let's move on. So this is a reference for uh, just the visual. And I was looking at this, the, the creature, and depending on the lighting, so that's another huge thing that I'll probably talk about, about in, uh, for a bit. So the eyes. The eyes are too small and you have a wide mouth here. You can focus on the eyes and have some kind of effect, uh, a trail or a ghosting trail always coming from the eyes. So if it's red, you can have that nice trail from the eyes all the time. And what I liked here, we don't have an exact camera like this, but you can see, you can feel the scale, how, how large this creature is. This is Chrono's eyes and this is the hero character. You can feel the scale. I think it's a very cool shot overall. So that's a reference to keep in mind. And then uh, this one, obviously, the StarCraft cinematic has tons of ideas. So the first one is the shield. And the shield, this shield is very, very uh, dynamic. So it only activates when there is something nearby it. It's not just a uniform sphere or a uniform shield, it only activates when you have something. And you can see there is a ripple ripple effect that I really like. And that's something you can do here. So like I said, we can have the claws actually emit energy. So not just uh, poking or hitting, you can have the claws of the creature emit continuous energy, and that could propagate into a shield that ripples as well similar to how it's uh, doing here. There's a lot of layers in this one. And you can see there's a, a sphere and then there's a, the shape, the, the, the hexagon shapes, and, and then it, it disappears. It fades off, basically. It starts large and then it fades off. And then the second time he got hit. And then this one. So this is another reference for the uh, uh, the energy that you could put between the, the the hero character hands. So it's made of lightning. And then he has this sweep that uh, basically disintegrates everything that it touches. And then this is a second uh, rise as well that we could use for reference as a reference. So this creature is the same that we have, I believe. No, it's not this. I think it's the same. I'm not sure, but it's very similar. So it has two claws and it has a big head and it's coming off the ground. You can see it's there's one pass of smoke and then a, a lot of rocks. And then the next portion is this shield, which I really like. I'll talk about that. So the shield here I really like because it has pretty much everything that we have. The claw hitting the, uh, the shield. You have this nice spark and then the claw is going in. So it's going to break... Uh, break the shield. See how it's emitting that sparks continuously. See that? And then it breaks and then it hits the character. So that's one reference for uh, for the shield. But this one is made for large scale, but I think it can work as well. The next effects I like is the beam, the energy beam from the... I remember, I forgot the name. So this one here, it's going to shoot the energy beam. It's going to disintegrate everything and then stop. So that's a reference for the for the beam as well. Now here is a very cool reference that I really like. I, I like the lighting. I like the effects. I like everything. This one. So it's only a couple of frames. But if you look closer, there's so many effects in that one. And this is the kind of effects you can create for the claw. When the claw hits the ground, you can emit something like this. See? It's very, very cool with the lightning and everything. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, it's going to disintegrate. So, yeah, definitely something to check. And this is a similar camera to what the type of cameras we're doing. So that's from StarCraft. And then the next one is a reference for the beam. So the actually, the first one I want to show is 
a reference for the uh, for the hand for the smoke effects of the claw you see how the gun coming in and dragging the smoke we can have something like that for the sweep claw sweeping and then it's going to charge and fire a beam of energy that we could uh, get some ideas from Yep, so that's the beam. Okay, let's move on. So this is a reference from Diablo. And uh, what I wanted to show here is the scene or the lightning and basically the entire environment composition and everything, not just the effects. And depending on how you're going to go, for example, you can have the environment be super dark and only the creature has some kind of lighting information or it's glowing or have this, uh, you know, pulsing lights and then some uh, form of light here to uh, to show the character. And you can have it super dark where it only shows the silhouette. So if you place a light behind this and have it full of like a super foggy, a lot of smoke, and you only see the silhouette and the eyes and the mouth maybe, and you can have some kind of uh, textures on it with lava emitting or something like that. And this is uh, the reference I was looking at. I will show a specific frame. It's very cool. So this is it. See how it's the, the creature is starting to appear? And we can go with something like this. You can have you can have the entire environment with smoke similar to our uh, nuke for effects, nuke uh, composting and nuke trailer. There's a lot of effects in the beginning. There's a lot of atmo, and then you can have the creature show up, and then the eyes is, are going to be lit. So it's mainly for artistic uh, reference here. So that's the one, and then. And then this one is for the the creature coming up. You can create something like this. So you can have some kind of effects that hits the ground. It could be a lightning or it could be just a, you know, a crack and light gets emitted uh, from the cracks and then the creature comes up. You can do something like this. So this is the, the uh, spaceship coming from the ground and you can definitely go with this uh, approach as well. You can have lava, you can have fire, you can have whatever you want to do uh, in the environment. So you have total freedom on what kind of uh, direction you want. Uh, this is a reference from Monster Hunter uh, trailer. So if you want to skip that, uh, if you want to, if you don't want to watch that, that's perfectly fine. You can skip this segment. And this is a creature coming off th from the scent. Yeah, that's the reference. It's a, a small creature. But I think the idea is clear. And about this as well, we um, if you feel comfortable changing the scale of the character, if you want to make the creature bigger, you can definitely do that. Because uh, it, I think, except the swing. Yeah, maybe the swing is not going to work. Or if you scale it, it's going to be too high. But you can change the scale of the, the creature if you want to make it feel a lot bigger or actually bigger, you can definitely do that. Just make sure that the animations still work. So that's the reference for the effects there. And then this one is for the energy ball. It's an energy ball from Order for Craft Cinematic. And you can see it has two layers. It has a core. And I think, yeah, it's not, it's not going to shoot it. It's just going to, it's controlling these three rocks and it's gonna is gonna throw them. And then the last reference I have, if it works. Yep. So the last reference I have is this one. And it's very old, has a nice decloaking effect, and it has the pulsing effect I was talking about. So you can see how Sarah it has this silhouette or the the suit that she has has a you know pulsating blue light and we can do something like this with the creature that and use it to convey basically how the creature is feeling you can change the color you can do whatever you want and i think that's pretty much it for the reference there's so many things that can be done with this and uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it thank you so much for uh, checking this out and talk to you soon bye bye